So I want to talk about my experience when my colleague and I went about generating funds for Hopeful Hearts. Bonjo, we had a pretty set pattern. We had a script, a PowerPoint presentation, uh, flyers, annual reports, and all the props that we needed. Uh, we knew what we were doing because this was what we usually did. And uh, we thought we were pretty smart. I, we still think we are smart. Mm -hmm. uh, so it happened a few months uh, before uh, COVID happened, unfortunately, in November 2019. We visited a renowned Swiss company in Shenzhen and uh, made our presentation to their top pro management. And they were really impressed by our presentations, um, discussed um, our uh, endeavor, and they were very ready to donate all their charity, annual charity proceeds to Hopeful Hearts. We were eclectic, absolutely delighted, because that would help us uh, see through three of the baby's heart surgeries. We, that, that day was very special day for us. And we were ha very happy returning from Shenzhen to Guangzhou. We were discussing the plans to uh, further develop it with the corporate world. On the way to Guangzhou, we received a call from uh, another international school in Guangzhou. And they have been our ardent supporters and they wanted to discuss our their charity plans with us. Fine, we arranged a meeting and in a few days time, we visited the school and met up with the uh, charity head and the headmaster. They informed us that they are going to donate the proceeds, all the proceeds of their international day to Hopeful Hearts Guangzhou. What a wonderful surprise for us. Absolutely 100% donation to Hopeful Hearts. The headmaster was quite an amicable fellow. He happily requested us to make presentations for the students, students like you all. We are fine because we are making presentations to their secondary, we have been organizing big sales. Uh, we have been raising funds with these students and we were we were we agreed. Okay, fine, we'll do it. He went on because he is always full of ideas. He happily he will suggest that this time he wanted us to do the presentations across all year groups okay and starting from the kindergartners o m g it's like me and my colleague look at each other and okay that's way below eye level mm -hmm. so we go out and we meet up with the early years head so the head of early years informs us that the kids in the kindergarten are as young as four years old and as old as four and a half years old okay what a delight. So what, what we do is we brainstorm and we Google and we YouTube and we use all kinds of things that were available on the internet. We took help from the teachers. We toned down our scripts and I think almost everything took the form of a story or some cartoon. We thought we were prepared. One cool winter morning when we arrive at the early years uh, premises, we are welcomed by the teachers and we are warmly welcomed by the students who could barely reach our knees like, like young, young uh, flowers uh, popping up and down. They were not at all clueless about what we were going to talk about. Their teachers had in their own way informed that why we were there and what we were going to do. The next 15 to 18 minutes of singing and dancing, it convinced me that I think I think we have managed to we managed to deliver a, at least a 60% and a 50% of that 60% is actually registered in the young minds. We went home happy. So after a month arrives the international day. So that 100% realization of that 60% and that 50% of that 60% all became a zero. Most of the times, those little kindergartners dragging their parents all the way to our booth and trying to tell or reiterate our story as we told them. They were as precise and as accurate as we would have imagined anyone. They were like our little brand ambassadors. They enjoyed this show, they saw our prop, they enjoyed this, and 
Oh, absolutely. It was a bonus for us. I had never fathomed that something experienced about a month ago would have had such deep registration and start a chain reaction at such a small stage. The whole idea of being capable and in turn reaching out to the underprivileged was like another feel good factor for them. It provided them as much happiness as one got out of playing with their friends or just watching their favorite cartoon. Their parents were impressed by the knowledge that they had about what we were doing as a charity. I witnessed these miniature human beings of being capable of having a very high understanding and approach towards the aspects that I thought was only for grown-ups. Or maybe in my chaotic adult mind, I forgot how observant and curious children are and how much knowledge they can retain. So that made me think, when we are cognitively and psychologically passing down aeons of knowledge and experience to our next generation, then what if we also exposed them to this? What is this, this that we are talking about? This is the power of giving back to the society in which one exists in. This is the awareness about the underprivileged and the deprived people who are all around the world, around us. These are the scenes of life which most of the times are hidden away in some obscure orphanages, uh, some schools or hospitals, old age homes, or even on the roadside, and millions of other institutions that are run by the governments or some kind human beings. What if we make these kids knowledgeable about this very important aspect early enough in life? This will play a huge role in formulating their personalities and, and making the whole future world creating a balance in it. So charity in its entirety. I, I felt in Opal Arts, charity in its entirety during those presentations it can be introduced to the kids at a very early age. This, the glimpses of this parallel world will create an early awareness in the kids, not only about being ambitious professionally, but also being and staying human at all points of life. So open, open heart, open eyes and open ears and mindfulness of the world around us will become a habit. And compassion is what will see us all through this tough time, especially during this time, we need to follow this principle. So human beings at last will start cohabiting the world instead of only inhabiting it. I strongly believe, just as we always remember the songs from our childhood, we never forget a story from our childhood. If we imbibe these uh, values in our kids at a very young age, they will never forget to perform an act of kindness whenever needed. We as, as responsible human beings on this earth we only always try to make this world a better place to live. And it is upon you, it is upon the youth of the, uh, the whole world now to try and understand this uh, phenomenon and pass it down even to the younger generation. Thank you.